Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of News You Can Use. I'm your host, Thera Martin Milling, and so glad to be with you. We are at the end of 2014. This year has gone so quickly, I don't know what happened yet, but I'm excited and feeling positive about the good things that can come and can happen in 2015. Today on our program, I am so excited. We're gonna have Reverend Buck with us. He is the pastor of Berean Baptist Church in North Philadelphia, and he is making things happen. We'll tell that story in just a little bit. And then when we turn the page a little bit later on in the program, we're going to talk with a young man who is just flipping Germantown upside down. He's a community activist and he is somebody who's on the move and making things happen. He's not just talking about what he's going to do, he's doing it. So we'll tell the story of Jeff Templeton in the second part of our program. And then before we wind it down on the year 2014, Dr. Donnie Patterson will join us with some health tips and some good sense tips as well. So stay along with us for the ride. We'll be back with our first guest, Reverend Buck, after this. Once again, we welcome you to our program. If you just turned your television set on, you are watching News You Can Use, and I'm your host, Thera Martin Milling. We're at the end of the year, folks, and so I thought no better time than right now to shine the spot on someone who is doing positive work, good work, progressive work, right in the heart of our North Philadelphia community. I'm speaking about Reverend Buck. He is the pastor of Berean Baptist Church. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Thera. We appreciate the invitation yes. for allowing us to come. Wow, there's a lot of good things going on at your church, but for me, I think the most impressive thing that just, just has me just flipping for joy is the health center <laughs> that your church decided the community needed because, yes. I, I mean, there, there's a a couple of health centers kind of in the area, yes. but this one yes. is right where it needs to be. Yes, um, we, we looked at um, the circumstances that was taking place, of course, in our community and the effect of the health care. And so what we actually, uh, the question that we pose to ourselves is, what happens after one o'clock on Sunday afternoon, after church is over? Do people still leave places and still needing health, mm -hmm. still needing some kind of wholeness? Mm -hmm. And so we put together a, a presentation and by the help of uh, my mentor, Dr. Gus Roman, mm -hmm. um, we were able to contact some doctors and we put together a, um, a financial piece where we actually took up, and, and this is the thing about it, we did it without grants, anything of that mm -hmm. sort, but each person in the congregation gave a small donation mm -hmm. and we were able to rehab, renovate that building and find some doctors to come and do some work in mm -hmm. our community. Mm -hmm. Well, I was blessed enough to be there yes. on your grand opening day yes. this past summer in yes. August. And the doctors were so kind, so nice. There were nurses out there. Everybody yes. was getting uh, their blood pressure. You were hollering, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> you acted like you were scared. I have a problem with needles. <laughs> so do I, so do I, so do I. But um, it was just a great day, a beautiful yes. day, but a, a blessed day for the community to yes. have that health center there. Yes, that health center has uh, helped many people, not only in mm -hmm. our congregation, but in our community. Uh, we also serve as persons who don't have any health care at all. And so the doctors who are taking care of that area over there, uh, Dr. Michael Johnson and Mrs. K. Johnson, Dr. Neil Pitts and his wife. Um, we also have some volunteer students from Temple University mm -hmm. and the University of the Sciences. And so they have come mm -hmm. and it is consistent, um, the, 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 the work that is needed, the health that is needed. Plus they also do vaccinations for children. Mm -hmm. And it's very beautiful in there. I mean, yes. you all took time um, warm colors on the walls, uh, lovely pictures or photographs. Mm -hmm. um, just very professional, very new, very yes. fresh. Not no little old raggedy hole no, in the wall. No. <laughs> like some yes. doctor's offices yeah. that I see in the community that you can tell have been around for a long time and I appreciate them for being seated in our community and for yes. staying and not leaving. But could you modernize a little bit? <laughs> yes, so. it, it, it was a great opportunity. We, we actually modeled our, our center after our eldest member in our congregation, she was 102 years old, mm. and her name was Miss Lydia M. Edwards. And so that's, that's who the, the building, the center itself, is actually named yes. after. And so on the third floor, we have a computer lab, we do entrepreneurial uh, work over there, startup core. Um, and so the clinic has just really opened 
um, the community up to more things that mm -hmm. we're doing in the congregation. Yeah. And you know, that's one of the uh, concerns that I've heard some people say about churches over the years. Oh, these churches, they open mm -hmm. on Sunday, they take all that money, and they don't do anything in the community. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not true. Right. I know that there's a lot of churches with good, strong, um, aggressive, um, uh, visionary pastors like you mm -hmm. who are doing things in the community above and beyond saving mm -hmm. souls on a Sunday or mm -hmm. preaching the gospel, which is a good, good, good thing to do. Yeah. Um, but I just want to be one of the people to help tell the story about yes. the pastors like you who are not just doing the church and the saving of the souls in the church, but Absolutely. saving in the community as best you can. Absolutely. Well, you know, Thera, um, our hashtag that we use is changing the way we do church. Um, not only do, do we look at the aspect of, of health care, but we've also looked at the aspect of education. Mm -hmm. And so we'll be opening up a daycare center starting in January. The real initiative that we looked to do that under um, as we started that out was to really deal with children who were born with special needs, mm -hmm. children who were born with deformities. And so we ran into some financial problems. Yeah. And so the director and the overseer of that pr uh, particular project, uh, Dr. Blanchard, um, she actually went back to the drawing board. And so what we decided to do is just open up a daycare for infants mm -hmm. and start there and then move forward. And mm -hmm. then there are some other things that we're doing um, we also know that economics are, have hit our community very hard. And so we've looked at several other models. And so we created a nonprofit organization. And right now, I'm blessed and glad to say that we now have a project and a business plan that has been put forth to employ persons, returning citizens, those who are coming out of incarceration, mm -hmm. and our veterans. Mm -hmm. And I'm a veteran myself. Mm -hmm. And so I know how hard it is. Wow. Uh, when it's, you know, you're trying to get out and trying to do better, trying to build an integrity and dignity for your family. So we, mm. we're really concerned mm. about our community. So we yeah. look at it as we would like to change the way we do church. Yeah. Um, I'm from Mississippi, and for me, church was not just Sunday morning. Church was a movement. Mm -hmm. And so a very instrumental person here in the Philadelphia area, Dr. Leon Sullivan, has done a great job with OIC and using his platform and his plan and reading his book, Bill, Brother Bill, I have looked at some of his stuff and have used his framework to kind of give us that revitalization mm. back to our community again. Well, one of the other things that, that I am committed to and involved with the last 10 years now, I teach life skills and job readiness classes yes. at a women's prison in North Philadelphia. I could walk from my prison, I call it my prison, yeah. to your church. It'd be a good walk, but I could walk <laughs> uh, uh, on uh, 2900 block of North 17th Street. Okay. That's where the prison is. And um, on Monday nights, I have anywhere from um, 15 to 35 women in my class mm -hmm. every Monday night. I'm there for about an hour and a half. And I'm always looking for opportunities for them because mm -hmm. they're in work release. So mm -hmm. they don't stay in prison. They, mm -hmm. they leave, they come out, they go to work, they can uh, visit their loved ones. Mm -hmm. They just have to come back when they're supposed to and be right. drug-free and alcohol-free, pass that breathalyzer test. Right. So um, I'm always looking for opportunities for them. Yeah. So it well, we, we, my interest. Of course, we, mm -hmm. we do have opportunities. Our reentry redemption ministry, uh, what we do with that is we help persons. We even take them to interviews. Mm -hmm. um, we have persons who do the job readiness training. And once again, one of the things that we looked at, it's great to take them to employment, but we do think that the self-help model needs to be reintroduced yeah, as well. Yeah. There's, an, mm -hmm. there's a level of integrity yes. uh, when a person can feel that they can contribute back mm -hmm. yes. um, as they go through this process of redemption. So we would look forward to working with you on that. Then you have a soup kitchen, I hear, because yes. one of the sisters of your church called, and um, <laughs> we were talking with uh, Mr. Ron Hinton from the Allegheny West Foundation Tasty yes. Cake Store and trying yes. to make some kind of regular commitment yes. to be supportive of your soup kitchen. Yeah. People are hungry. Our, our soup kitchen, um, they get hot meals. Mm -hmm. um, and we're thankful for Miss Grace Allen, who does a great That's job. Yep. Yes, Miss Grace Allen. She's looking for me. I yeah. guess. <laughs> Ron, she, give me an answer. <laughs> yeah, she does a great job. Um, and we, it's, it's not only open to those who don't have, but we even invite those to come and sit with them and mm -hmm. have this conversation or this dialogue. Um, and it's over hot meals that you know, agreements can be made. Yes. Uh, it's over hot meals that persons mm -hmm. can get opportunities sure, sure. and for second chance opportunities as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, you are on point and doing it and making things happen. Every year you do an outstanding Juneteenth 
celebration. Yes. And I know it's December and people are going to be looking at this show in December and into the beginning of January. Yes. I know we're nowhere near June yet, <laughs> but put it on your calendar that you want to come to North Philadelphia, 26th yeah. in Cambria um, on, on Juneteenth Day and celebrate. Well, actually, it's at celebrate. the corner of 25th in Indiana. Okay. Yeah. 25th in Indiana. Right. That's where the Juneteenth celebration That's where the happens. Juneteenth okay. celebration right. is. Put it on your calendar. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing that for three years, and it's growing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, this year, we're, we're looking at doing a parade um, and kind of expanding it each year, but we always have a focus. Uh, this year, I think the focus is going to be on the integrity of our people mm -hmm. once again, and that's more like um, looking at our past history, not so far all the way back, but what have we done in these past right. four or five right. years? to establish us uh, as a strong community. Okay. Um, now, real quick, in 60 seconds or less, can you give us a, uh, like how long has Berean been around and give us the address and tell us when people can come worship? Yes, Berean has been around for 64 years. We're right at the corner of uh, 25th in Indiana, 2425 West Indiana Avenue. Um, our worship services are on Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock. Our Sunday school is at 9 a.m. Our midweek service we have, which is on Wednesday at 6 o'clock p.m. Mm -hmm. And so there are some other things that we're doing throughout the week, but we can be reached at 215-229-8048. And so if there's anything our community need, we want to be there to help, um, and we're reaching out more. We're doing, as we say, changing the way mm -hmm. we do church. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we're going to change the way we do our program right now because I'm going to ask that uh, Pastor Buck uh, close us out in, in a word of prayer. Uh, this will be the last show that I will have the opportunity to do for the year of 2014. I thank God for the opportunity. I thank LaSalle University, uh, Professor Ellis, and all of the awesome students here at LaSalle for this opportunity. I do not take it lightly, but I say uh, the most powerful thing that any of us can do in this world at this time in the state of affairs for this nation and the whole universe is prayer. Thank you. Let us pray. Gracious, wise, and eternal Father, we thank you now for this privilege and this opportunity. God, as we look around this nation and as we look around this global universe, we pray now that you would bring peace across this world, not only here in these United States, God, but abroad. God, we pray that differences can be settled, and God, that we will agree with one another in love. And then, God, we thank you for this honor and this privilege, for this, this opportunity and this show, God, that it is bringing forth understanding and truth. We ask that you would touch Thera right now, that she may be able to reach out further. And God, even those who are present here at the LaSalle University, God, may they become a greater institution here in this city and a beacon of light across this globe. Bless this program that those who are seeking answers may contact it for resources and research. And God will be so ever careful to give thy name praise, honor, and glory. It is in the mighty name of Christ we pray, mm -hmm. and we count these things done by faith. Amen. Amen, amen, and amen again. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Thera. Thank we you appreciate so it. Thank much. you so Bless much. You. Bless Marie you. Marian Baptist Church, 25th and in Indiana, North Philadelphia. We're going to keep it moving on this show as we go forward. We're going to be talking with a young man who is just fiery. I love his spirit. I met him when he knocked on my door about a year ago, maybe a little less than a year ago, and he started talking, and he had flyers in his hand, and I see him all the time going through the community, but he's not just talking. He's making things happen. I'm talking about Jeff Templeton. We'll be back to tell his story in a moment. Stay with us. Cyberbullying comes in many forms and can happen 24-7. If you or someone you know is a victim of cyberbullying, take preventative and assertive action. Keep evidence and document all instances. Remember to record dates, times, descriptions, and also save and print screenshots. Block your cyberbully and present your evidence to school officials or law enforcement. No one deserves to be a victim of cyberbullying, and together we can end it. For more information, visit stopbullying.com. Hi, I'm Thera Martin Milling, host of News You Can Use. Hello, I'm Fire Commissioner Derek Sawyer. I'm your host of Freedom From Fire. Hi, I'm your host, Ty Johnson, of a program called Bridging the Gap. Join our hosts and their amazing guests only on LaSalle TV. Tune in to Comcast Channel 56 and Verizon Fios Channel 36 to check out LaSalle TV. 
You can get more LaSalle TV on social media like LaSalle TV on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at LaSalle TV Philly. Check us out. Bye for now. Hungry for LaSalle TV? Check us out on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Check out our Twitter. And continue watching LaSalle TV. I didn't think this could happen to me. I just wanted to feel pretty. I just put my drink down for a second. I didn't want to hurt her. I didn't want to fight back. We're continuing now with our program, and I am so glad to be able to say hello. If you just turned your television set on, you missed a little bit of news you can use, but we still got the best yet to come. I'm the host, Vera Martin Milling. Glad to be with you here at LaSalle TV. And joining me right now, I have a very special guest sitting by my side, Mr. Jeff Templeton. He is from the Germantown community, and um, that's how I first met him. In fact, I first met you you knocked on my door and you introduced yourself. You said you were running for committee person and you just, your message was just nice. You just came across like a decent person. And I said, hmm, I'm gonna vote for this guy. I decided that day, the first time I met you, I'm gonna vote for this guy. And I just see you doing so much work in the community and I don't think you're funded. Like I don't think anybody's dropping whole lots of checks no, and money no, no. to get you to do stuff, but you're like, determined you're going to do some good programming and you've been doing it you're not just talking you're right. making it happen i am i am and thank you so much for having me yes, on the show uh, i decided to run for a committee person because i wanted to see real tangible change in our community mm -hmm. i don't think we utilize our youth enough uh, for a lot of the things that are going on in the community and they need to be more involved and mm -hmm. one of the promises that i had was that i was going to be effective as possible in our community and also work with other committee people within the area. Mm -hmm. We just did a, uh, a feeding for our seniors, a Thanksgiving feeding for our seniors, mm -hmm. where I teamed up with Cheryl Moraine. And it was a phenomenal turnout. Mm -hmm. We had uh, about 50 people show mm -hmm. up and oh, neat, turkey, neat, it, was, it was great, mashed potatoes. It was, oh, everyone was really digging the event. Oh, good, good. And the one before that, it was a community breakfast where we also used the youth again, mm -hmm. once again, to interact with the community because it's important, again, moving forward to use our youth as mm -hmm. much as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so. so now where are you getting your ideas and where are you getting your spirit and your energy? Because we need to duplicate you at least a thousand times over just for Germantown so that we can get more cohesive and start seeing more positive things happen for our neighborhood. Well, uh, I get my inspiration from God, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. Mm -hmm. I, I pray a lot and, and uh, I think that he provides me with a lot of these answers mm -hmm. and uh, techniques to go at the community with. Then you must be obedient because see, God gives me stuff too. I have to confess, God gives me stuff like all the time. Like, ideas like visions that can't possibly come from me i mean i'd like to think i'm a smart woman <laughs> but i ain't that smart i'm not God always gives obedient it to me and then he says like do it and then sometimes i stumble and i don't do it but when i listen and i do it it's excellent yeah because yeah, he said do obedient. it i'm mm -hmm. not always obedient but i did um i did hear one of the callings that i think that was uh, was really really good to move in on and that was a i founded a nonprofit organization called speak Mm -hmm. which stands for Staying Positive Equals Amazing Kids. And it is a wonderful nonprofit organization. And we focus on providing educational information and activities that encourage youth to become responsible members of our community. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the things that we also provide are community service projects for youth to take part in. Now, as you know, this is especially important mm -hmm. because, you know, in order for some students to graduate, they must first accumulate right. a certain amount of community service hours. We also provide a, a ton of other things, like some of the programs that we're offering is our Golden Ticket Incentive Program, where 
we actually reward children for their academic achievements. We're working with a few schools right now, John Story Jenks, mm -hmm. uh, Anthony Wayne Academy, and John B. Kelly, that's in Germantown, mm -hmm. so. Uh, and the students love it. And we yeah. also have a golden ticket shadowing program where children actually have a chance to shadow public figures in the workspace. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Councilwoman mm -hmm, Cindy mm -hmm. Bass uh, is, is a uh, shadower. Yeah. So is Judge Gene Devani Campbell. Mm -hmm. So this is a great inspiration for children to be a part of, and it removes any intimidation right. that they may see, you know, looking at it from the outside. Okay. Now, um, I, I know that, you know, to have an idea is one thing. To make it happen, again, can be a whole nother ball field. Um, are you able to get some level of support, like a Cindy Bass? Does she say, oh, Jeff, I love what you're doing. I'm going to find you some activities fund money or something to help fuel the fire to keep things going for these great programs you're offering? Sure. Cindy Bass is very supportive. Mm -hmm. uh, my biggest challenge is finding people within the community who are going to be dedicated and be honest to the youth that we're working with. Mm -hmm. That is such an, you know, it, it seems to be the, the biggest task. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, I, I see a lot of resistance come from the adults more than the children. The children are, are open to anything, you know, they're like, hey, if it's fun, I'm with it, you mm -hmm. know. Um, you know, we have our community, our annual community service event down in Love Park, mm -hmm. where we give children that chance to accumulate their, their community service okay. hours. And uh, we just had it this November, mm -hmm. where we uh, fed fed the homeless, right, in fact, right, I, right. I think I yes. saw you in the November 8th. November 8th. And that I, I missed it. Yeah, I, I missed mentioned it. it to you. Yes, yes. And uh, mm -hmm. it was a great turnout. Mm -hmm. We had about just over 200 people show wow, up. Wow. And we had the, the Boy Scouts come out and they did their thing mm -hmm. and you know. That's so good. You know, you can find a ton of information just on our website alone. At and I, I like the idea that you don't just stay in Germantown then with some of the activities that you do because another thing that I found, some of the youth, some of the young people that I've met in our community, in Germantown, right around Schoolhouse Lane and Coulter and all that, kids who've never been any further than Germantown or North Philly maybe, never got to Atlantic City or Wildwood or not even the Penn's Landing, are you yeah, kidding me? Yeah. There are children who live in this city and that's their world where they, that little radius of where they live and they go to school and that's like insane crazy to me and so again I love hearing what you're doing and you're taking kids out and you're letting them see that there's a bigger part of Philadelphia Right. than just Germantown, or there's a bigger part of the world than just Philadelphia. Yeah, one of the great things that I want to mention is that with, with our councilwoman, what she's allowing children to do is, uh, is to come into City Hall and shadow her mm -hmm. during mm -hmm. a session, mm -hmm. a council session. Yes. And a lot of people don't know exactly what goes on in mm -hmm. City Hall. Even mm -hmm. some adults, you'd mm -hmm. be surprised. I know. They have no <laughs> clue what goes on in City right. Hall or even what goes on in, in, in the council meetings. So mm -hmm. that's a really great encouragement for children. And the last one actually left and said, you know what, Mom, I think I might wind up becoming a, a politician. <laughs> Which is a segue to the next thing I want to talk to you about in the two and a half minutes or so that we have left. Um, I'm not trying to make you uh, a city council person today or tomorrow or a state rep or a state senator. However, the reality is you are a committee person now. Can you just talk real briefly so that people who are out there wondering, well, how, how do I get started in politics? I would think that the committee person level is where you might want to start. Right, it is. So how do you do that piece? Well, uh, first of all, you, you might want to look into it uh, a little bit, the responsibilities of the committee person. Mm -hmm. uh, you start right there, and if, if it looks like you can run with the uh, responsibilities of it, then talk to some more people in the community. Talk to your ward leader mm -hmm. uh, and, and get some feedback from them and, and get their experiences because they were once a committee person right. as well. Right. So, right. and then, you know, there's also the, the Committee of 70, and, it, and everything is online, so you can find out just about everything mm -hmm. online. So. And the reality is there's some work to be done. There's some door knocking. You've got to walk. You Absolutely. can't just say, oh, I want to be a committee person. And, and you can do the paperwork and the filing and get your name on the ballot, I would guess. But you got to do some work. You got to talk to people. You got to shake some hands, kiss some babies. <laughs> yeah, that was that. that was one of the most challenging things I've ever done. Was walk <laughs> up all those steps. I uh -huh. felt like a, an addition to Rocky. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I walked up so many steps yes, and, yes, and, yes. And, and and talked to so many people. And but that was great. You know, that's what about that's what a committee man is about being about. It's, mm -hmm. it's interacting with your community and mm -hmm. being there for them. You know, they may have problems that you might need to, you know, they need yeah, to help, yeah. help with and, and that you'll, you'll be able to help and fix them. Well, know. having met you um, before you were a committee person and watching you win um, says to me that you obviously did some things right, 
Um, I wish you well with your future endeavors. Thank I wish you, so you well much. as a committee person. Thank and you. I see where you're already making a difference in the community. Thank so you so much. We thank you for being a part of that our community. That means a lot. Thank Keep you so Keep up the Steve. good work. Thank you. And thank you for bringing Cheryl Mulrain, even though we don't see her on set today. Now she knows where the studio is, and I know she'll be back at another time, perhaps with you again. There's a whole lot of great things happening at Happy Hollow and throughout that whole community, and we want to blast it to the world. And Absolutely. Germantown's a wonderful place. Yes, it is. I agree. All righty, we're going to keep it moving as we wind it down on this last show for the year of 2014. We're getting ready to head on over to Dr. Donnie Patterson. She's got some health tips she wants to share. Hi, December is HIV Health Awareness Month. And I want to remind you the number one symptom of people with HIV is none. In other words, many people do not know they have HIV. One thing that you may not know is that 40 to 90% of people within the first two months of being infected by HIV complain of flu-like symptoms. So they have fevers, chills, achiness, and joint pain. So in the season where influenza is very common, like this season, people may miss that they actually are being infected by HIV. Some other symptoms that people may experience are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, numbness and tingling in their extremities. Some people may have vision changes. Some people may have severe fatigue. They can also have some mental lapses and feel like they're foggy and their mental capacity is not the same. So please remember that anyone of any age, race, sex, gender can get HIV. No one is exempt. So if you're sexually active, and you are not using protection, if you um, have sex with an IV drug user or have used IV drugs, we highly encourage you to make sure that you get checked. And even for people who are heterosexuals, they need to be checked as well. So as always, you know my motto, I'm Dr. Donnie and I wish you the best of health, but if you can't be the best, you can be better. All right, and we thank you. We thank you, Dr. Donnie, for all that you bring to our program. We appreciate you so much. We love you, and uh, we love all of the students, again, here at LaSalle University, and we're cheering for them. They will be taking exams uh, as we get through this month of December, and I want them all to do well and, and rock, because you do rock here at LaSalle University. And to Amanda Keaton, uh, one of our students here who is like the uh, producer under the producer, uh, Tanya Ellis. We. Uh, Certainly want to encourage you as you get through this next semester as well. And again, for all the students, we just love you so much. And to our viewers, we thank you for checking us out on news you can use. Be positive as we go into this new year. I think if there was any New Year's resolution that all of us could make, possibly, that would be to be kinder to each other, to uh, speak to each other, to talk neighborly to each other, and to uh, love our city and respect our city and not to trash our city. And just be positive as we go forward. So happy new year, everybody. Peace and blessings from all of us here at LaSalle TV. And to you, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. All right, take care, everybody. Happy New Year.